Good afternoon. My name is Simon, and I'm a research scientist at Uber ATG. So in this session, we'll be discussing an important behind the scenes component of self-driving, which is the simulation system. So a critical component to making self-driving vehicles a reality is verifying that they are indeed safe. So for example, how can we properly evaluate that a self-driving vehicle will perceive and stop for a duck? An actor we might rarely see crossing the street in the middle of the night, as you can see on the left side. Or how do we even make sure that SDV will stop in time if an actor enters our lane from occlusion, as you can see on the right of this slide. Well, the self-driving industry has used a combination of three different approaches to evaluate self-driving vehicles. First, there's the structure testing, which tests the SDV under a set of reproducible scenarios. Now, this is typically done at a test track facility, and this testing setting is considered high fidelity since we can evaluate a full autonomy system and hardware of the car in real world on a particular situation. We also consider this testing to be reactive. Now, as the SDV perceives the scene and perform a man maneuver, the other agents in the real world can respond to its behavior and the sensor observations will be updated accordingly. Now, while effective, structure testing currently has some major limitations. First, it's difficult to test extreme or dangerous situations such as high speed avoidance maneuvers. And in addition, large scale testing is impractical and costly. So we can also evaluate SDV on pre-recorded real world data in the virtual environment, but this potentially provides a more realistic setting for urban driving scenarios compared to structure testing. However, the simulation is not reactive. The sensory data and the other actors' behaviors are not updated according to the SDV's action. It is also difficult to collect and test safety critical cases at scale in this setup. Now, the third method is to use simulation, which is the focus of this talk. While simulation system has a domain gap with the real world, simulation has some significant advantages that makes it the most appealing case here. The agents in the environment in the simulation can be reactive, and the simulation allows testing any safety critical scenarios safely and easily. And most excitingly, simulation has the potential to be scalable. Not only can we perform millions of different evaluation tests, we can also use simulation to train different autonomy algorithms. So let's review again the SDV system and how we can inject simulation for evaluating such a system. So an SDV ingests sensor data, perceives and predicts agent behaviors, and lastly, plans a safe path. Traditional simulators only simulate bounding boxes and trajectories, enabling only the motion planning evaluation to occur. So this is the typical approach in the industry due to the ease of running and relatively low overhead. But it makes the assumption that the self-driving stack is modular, which is not always the case, and just use actor dynamics for traffic simulation. But End-to-end -end closed loop testing of the full autonomy system require us to go much further than just simulating the bounding box and trajectories. We need to have a complete simulation system that models the real world accurately. So to build such a complete simulation system, we need to first animate the dynamic state of the environment. So here where we'll have actors including vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists. Then we need to construct accurate geometries of both the static environment and the dynamic actors. And finally, simulate the sensor observation that SDV is receiving. We will begin the rest of our discussion by talking about simulating the actor dynamics first. And we refer to this component as actor sim. So the goal of actor sim is to generate actor behaviors that are high fidelity, realistic, and lastly, diverse. So here, when we say realistic, it means that we wanted to model human behavior as well and diverse in the sense that it can cover all possible behaviors that a human might execute in a particular scenario. So we think that these attributes are very critical to enable the main application of the simulation system. Indeed, we need this capability to allow us to train and test SUV on seen and potentially harmful events that can happen in the real world. So understanding and replicating human behavior is a key theme in both autonomy development and simulation. But we want to emphasize that there are key differences between the requirements in actor simulation and those in prediction planning. So more specifically, in motion planning, the goal is to generate the safest and the optimal trajectory plan. 
So in this cartoon, the red trajectory represents that. So even though we may learn by imitating human driving, we're ultimately interested in learning only the best driving behavior that can get us safely from point A to point B. So whereas in actor simulation though, we're interested in recovering the full distribution over human behaviors, which might include potentially reckless and dangerous maneuvers. So in this cartoon, it's illustrated by the orange trajectories and the distributions around them. So in comparison to prediction, on the other hand, uh, where we have partial and noisy observation of the world, and we're trying to estimate what the actors will do in the future, given the past, here we may actually assume perfect information about the environment and the other actors in a simulation environment. So this difference allow us to kind of think about the problem in a central way. It allows us to centrally coordinate actors to create scenarios if that make it more interesting for the testing situations. And more importantly, the difference between actor sim and prediction is that the actor sim is a closed loop task where the previous plans of the actors influences the future states. Now, in other words, so the underlying task is a sequential decision problem. And by making IID assumptions like we do in, in prediction, it will not work. So given this is a difficult task, it might be helpful to look at it in terms of uh, progress of how we need to get to the final goal. We like to think of the spectrum of fidelity with which we can animate the dynamic actors in a sim. So at the simplest and the most inflexible end of the spectrum, we can manually specify fixed trajectories for each actor to follow in a scene. And in fact, this is how most testing scenarios for STVs are specified. Now, at a more advanced level, actors can execute simple lane following behaviors and yielding to the vehicles in front of it, given a fixed route to follow. But these approaches have gross simplification of the real world and doesn't really model the complexity and the messiness of it. And to arrive at the model with high flexibility and fidelity, we really need to capture these complex, non-compliant behaviors such as fast lane changes, vehicles cutting corners, making U-turns, et cetera. And also, Vehicles tend to follow different styles when they're driving on the road. They could be an aggressive cab driver, or they can be a very cautious new driver. And lastly, we really need to understand the interaction of these uh, actors to be able to model them well in a scene, such as the cases where one actor yielding to another when it makes a uh, merge, or on the other hand, um, two stream of traffic coordinating to making a safe merge. Now, different use cases of the simulation system that we talked about actually require different degrees of fidelity. So when evaluating SDV's reactive capability, it might be sufficient to specify fixed trajectories for actors of interest, since we don't really need it to react to the SDV. So in the cartoon on the top right, we illustrate such a case where the actor follows a fixed trajectory and the AV needs to react to that. But if we want to do something more sophisticated, for example, evaluating SDV's proactive capabilities, we actually need to act model how well the actor yields to the SDV. So this shows an example of that scenario where the SDV is trying to merge into a high density highway. And we really need to model how these actors will react to the SDV. And lastly, to evaluate the SDV in a general and complex traffic situation without having to handcraft it, we need the highest fidelity actors and interaction understanding to automatically generate these interesting traffic flows. For example, something like this. Now, most in the self-driving industry is still relying on traditional engineering approaches to develop these actors, which as we can see is limited in fidelity. Fortunately, learning-based approaches have shown some promise in developing high fidelity actor models as they leverage and scale with the abundance of label data. So in this talk, we'll focus on two imitation learning approaches as we categorize them as direct le policy learning and reward learning. So before we get into the learning-based approaches, let's talk about the longstanding rule-based approach of car following models developed for microscopic traffic simulation. It basically characterized the car following dynamics in a closed form. And this policy can be very efficiently unrolled by solving or approximating the differential equations. So the benefit of this approach is that it's simple and can guarantee no traffic rule violation and no collision if we want. 
was extremely rigid and can generate physically unrealistic behaviors that makes it confusing for the SDV to reason about what might be acceptable and not. So another approach is to sim simply treat each actor as an SDV. And we can apply the modular SDV autonomy stack that we've developed for each of these actors in the scene. So the benefit of this approach is that it leverage existing models that we've developed for prediction and planning, and they can produce some high fidelity maneuvers. However, this might be prohib prohibitively expensive to run for a large number of actors, since each of these prediction and planning models might require a full GPU or strong, a, a lot of compute. And furthermore, motion planning trajectories often, motion planning approaches generally produce the optimal trajectories that we, as we have mentioned, rather than the human distribution over possible behaviors. Now let's talk about the learning based approaches. The first learning paradigm is direct policy learning, where we directly learn a policy that outputs the action given a state. The simplest form of such learning is behavior cloning, which reduced the sequential decision problem into a supervised learning problem. So in other words, instead of learning a model that does well under its own distribution, it tries to uh, learn a model that does well under the distribution of states seen by the experts. However, in making this assumption, it results in a problem generally called covariate shifts, where there's a domain gap between the expert distribution used in training and the model distribution that's unrolled in testing. Now, in particular, the error compounds at a very rapid rate and render these methods uh, unsuitable. So there have been many approaches to mitigate this issue. First of which is data augmentation, where we expand the expert distribution to cover the states that's encountered by the model. So optimally, we would like to query an interactive expert, but that's often unavailable or prohibitively expensive. And other methods in this line work have sought to heuristically generate more synthetic expert examples to cover the space, and either via some clever multi-camera setup to generate automatic labels, or via trajectory perturbation to illustrate, the mod illustrate to the model what it needs to do when it goes away from the expert trajectories. So in this paradigm, the learning procedure remains simple and familiar since it's still a supervised learning task. But the issue is, as we've mentioned, we can't really get to these interactive queries and we often require handcrafted data augmentation that might introduce unwanted consequences. So more recently, an alternative approach in, uh, alternative approach in constraining the model distribution to be within the expert distribution has also been explored. So more specifically, one method proposed to learn a uncertainty aware forward model and basically penalize the model for, penalize the policy part of the model for arriving in a state where the forward model is uncertain, basically whatever it hasn't seen before. Now this method works well without data augmentation, but it's only been shown to work on simple driving data sets and it'll be exciting to see if it can scale to a larger data set. An alternative paradigm to direct policy learning is reward learning, or also called inverse reinforcement learning. The high level idea here is to infer the reward and costs associated with the state action pairs instead of directly learning the policy. Then given the learned cost, one can use any kind of planning or RL approaches to solve the actual task. So we would like to know that both two works from our lab, the learnable PLT and the neural motion planner can be viewed in this framework as learning a cost function first and then running a sampling based planning to execute the behavior. So while these methods allow us to incorporate domain prior knowledge via flexible cost functions, they do require an additional optimization step as compared to the direct policy methods. And lastly, um, without a proper likelihood based training, it's hard to get to a probabilistic interpretation for these methods. So uh, within the RL framework, generative adversarial imitation learning is another prominent line work. So the Gale based approaches propose to learn a discriminator to distinguish the expert trajectories from trajectories generated by the model. And they also propose to learn a policy jointly using the GAN style alternative optimization. And given this formulation, follow up work has also improved by using a differentiable forward model, extending it to multi agent settings and use curriculum learning for solving it from uh, demonstrations in the wild. So while this approach is clearly that avoids the behavior cloning issues without complex data augmentation, 
It also requires a simulation environment to unroll the policy, and this can be slow and inefficient. And second of all, the joint optimization over policy and discriminator could be challenging as well. So after going through this work, we know that there are still many remaining challenges yet to be solved in this domain. The reliance on simulation in the loop training particularly makes iterating on models much slower, but they do provide a good method to mitigate the behavior cloning issues. Furthermore, there hasn't been a very good metric that captures both the realism and the diversity of the learned actor policy yet. And lastly, most work has focused on learning individual actor policies, but in order to create an interesting scenario for testing, it's essential to characterize the whole scene jointly. So, I will pass it now to Siva to discuss how we can simulate a sensor, obser sensor observation system to complete the entire system. Thanks, Simon. Hi, my name is Siva and I'm a research scientist at Uber ATG. While there are a suite of different sensors that can be helpful on the self-driving car, such as LiDAR, camera, radar, IMU, infrared, and so on, we focus discussion in this tutorial to LiDAR and camera as they are the sensors most prevalent in self-driving cars in industry. Sensor simulation of both LiDAR and camera data is a challenging topic. Both sensors require building a virtual representation that accurately models the geometry of the real world and then performing realistic rendering of the scene. For realistic geometry, the field typically splits the problem into two components, background scenes, such as roads and buildings, and dynamic agents, such as vehicles or pedestrians. After building the geometry, we generate sensor observations. I'll now discuss the field of LiDAR simulation for self-driving. Here we show a LiDAR sensor on one of our vehicles. There are two primary ways in the field we simulate LiDAR, graphics-based physics renderers and data-driven approaches. I'll discuss both of them. Standard graphics, such as simulation-based game engines like Carla and AirSim, simulate LiDAR by designing 3D assets by hand, building a virtual city, and then physics rendering the LiDAR. The advantage and disadvantage of graphics-based engine simulation is explicit world and physics modeling from the ground up. This allows for total control of the world and precise definition of all the assets. But unfortunately, it is expensive to create these assets, and it's not scalable to have virtual worlds for the numerous cities we want to test in. Additionally, the simulated LiDAR is unrealistic. One reason why the previous LiDAR simulation is unrealistic is that game engine simulators use low polygon assets to speed up sensor simulation and don't properly model LiDAR physics, such as material reflectance properties or the specific calibrations of different LiDAR sensors. Blenser is a software system that attempts to model this with enhanced graphics modeling of both physics and calibration. Unfortunately, enhanced graphics suffers more so from the issues mentioned earlier, with the additional disadvantage that simulation is slow. Blenser reports a single LiDAR sweep taking eight to nine seconds per frame to generate, preventing scalable autonomy testing. Data-driven approaches instead show how we can use sensor data collected from the real world to build 3D assets of the world, and then apply rendering to simulate the LiDAR. This recent work from CMU shows off-road terrain LiDAR simulation by generating assets of vegetation and the road. We would like to do a similar approach for LiDAR simulation in the urban driving setting and make sure that the simulated LiDAR has a small domain gap to the real LiDAR with respect to the perception algorithms of the autonomy stack. This is what the AADS LiDAR simulation system does from the Baidu Apollo Research Group. They use a high-end LiDAR scanner to collect highly accurate background scenes, which then they co then combine with a collection of CAD models and probabilistic scene generation to generate the final LiDAR sweeps. This approach is promising, but it is still constrained in scaling due to the set of CAD models available and the use of an expensive scanner to create the virtual world. It also does not fully model all the physical effects of LiDAR, such as the rolling shutter effect and the motion blur of actors. Recent work in this year's CVPR, LiDAR Sim, builds on the past work by incorporating both graphics and data-driven approaches, along with machine learning. LiDAR Sim builds its assets at scale using a fleet of self-driving cars with standard sensors, and then uses physics and machine learning to generate realistic LiDAR simulation. I'll now discuss in more details the different components of LiDAR Sim. LiDAR Sim leverages millions of real-world miles collected by our fleet of self-driving cars 
to help build virtual worlds for autonomous vehicle testing. On the right, you can see a reconstructed background scene of an intersection and a collection of different dynamic objects created from LiDAR data. Here we show how LiDAR sim generates realistic backgrounds. We record real LiDAR data by driving in an area and removing moving objects. We aggregate and align the LiDAR, combine across multiple trajectories, and then create a mesh circle representation. A similar process is done to generate dynamic objects. We utilize a symmetric prior to get a complete shape of the vehicle. Leveraging real data allows us to inject the diversity of objects seen in the real world into LiDAR sim. From left to right, top of the car, flatbed trucks with construction cones, and trailers with extended cars. Making sure we can detect these rare objects as vehicles is important, and by leveraging real data, we can simulate more situations that are in the long tail. You often don't see this type of diversity from other 3D asset libraries or CAD model databases. Once we generate our assets, we can place them in a scene configuration, just like in a video game. We now have scalable and diverse scenes. We then perform realistic sensor simulation with physics and machine learning. LiDAR generates point clouds by shooting light into the scene and measuring the travel time to determine an object's distance. To mimic this physical process, we raycast our scene and generate a simulated point cloud. However, raycasting generates more returns than real LiDAR, since the return light does not always meet the detection threshold. We call this phenomenon raydrop. Raydrop is complicated to simulate by physics alone because we don't know the physical parameters of our real world. Fortunately, using a raydrop network, we leverage real data and machine learning to bridge the sim to real domain gap. We convert each slider sweep into a spherical image representation, encoding features related to raydrop, such as range values, incident angles, semantics, and pass intensity values. We then feed these features into the network and predict how likely a ray will be dropped. The labels come from real LiDAR ray drop patterns. We then sample the ray drop probability to generate the final point cloud. We now show some qualitative results. This side-by-side -side comparison shows LiDAR sim generating realistic point clouds with small domain gap for downstream perception tasks and autonomy testing. The green detection downing boxes are from a perception model trained on real data only. We can see that the boxes appear and disappear in both simulated LiDAR and real LiDAR at around the same time. We now compare LiDAR sim against Carla, a state-of-the-art graphics-based sensor simulator on the task of semantic segmentation. A model trained with Carla data and tested on real data has a large sim to real domain gap. But a model trained with LiDAR sim has just a 1% domain gap, significantly outperforming Carla. The small domain gap means that LiDAR sim is effective for data augmentation. By combining LiDAR sim data with real data, we gain a significant performance boost for vehicle detection with both small amounts of real data and large amounts of real data. LiDAR sim also allows us to evaluate a perception and motion planning system maneuvering safety critical scenarios in a closed loop setting. Here we see a simulated scenario where a vehicle turns into the SDB's lane occluded by a bus. The system, trained only on real LiDAR data, is able to process LiDAR sim data and safely break to avoid collision. So in summary, with no additional training or domain adaptation, we can directly use LiDAR sim to test an autonomy system end-to-end -end on millions of different scenario variations, achieving results that match closely with the real world and allowing us to gain new insights. Thank you. I'll now pass it over to Shin Chen, who will discuss an equally important sensor in self-driving, the camera sensor. Thanks, Siva. Hi, my name is Xing Chen. I'm a research scientist at Uber ATG. So along with the LiDAR, the camera sensor is another critical component for self-driving car. And as we learned previously, modern uh, autonomous driving car platforms are equipped with multiple uh, high-resolution cameras covering different viewpoints from the center, such as the front view, side view, and rear view. This means that for camera simulation, we need to simulate camera images which are consistent across space and time. We first review graphics-based camera simulation and the recent progresses in using neural networks for camera sensor simulation. Then we present two recent efforts towards photorealistic camera simulation and scale. 
graphics-based camera simulation relies on the classic rendering techniques. On one hand, real-time rendering is cheap and efficient, but does not uh, produce photorealistic sensory data. On the other hand, high-fidelity rendering is very expensive and hence not scalable, as it usually takes a few hours or, uh, to render a single frame. Recent uh, neural rendering method formulate the uh, camera sensor simulation as the problem of conditional image generation through thematic layout to image translation, domain adaptation, and image manipulation. However, these single view based methods cannot be directly applied to create virtual environment for self-driving cars as the simulated camera images are usually geometrically inconsistent. Other methods insert 3D vehicles into the scene by encoding and manipulating semantic image representations or manually specifying vehicles in the new locations and rendering them. However, this requires very expensive manual editing and hence not scalable. In addition, these approaches do not have a 3D scene representation, making it very difficult to extend to video handling interactions with other actors in the scene. So in contrast, uh, we will present now two novel efforts uh, towards photorealistic uh, camera simulation by leveraging existing camera sensor data and the 3D geometry of the scene. First, we study the problem of dynamic object removal from the 3D scene. The output of such a process can be used as a blank state for adding virtual dynamic objects at, at a later time. And second, we study an inverse problem, namely the inserting dynamic objects into the scene in a geometrically consistent and physically plausible manner. As we automate uh, camera simulation in both efforts, we can create a great amount of scenarios that potentially capture the diversity and the long tail distribution of driving data. Given sequential multi-sensor data in the form of uh, multi-view camera images and spatial the sparse LiDAR point clouds as the input. Uh, we design a smart 3D editing uh, program that is capable of removing all dynamic objects in the scene, such as the vehicles and the pedestrians, and recovering background structures such as uh, buildings, roads, uh, vegetation, and uh, sidewalks. Towards this goal, we first reconstruct the 3D geometry of the scene and then propose a data-driven approach based on the reconstructed geometry. As you see in this figure, uh, call to our system is a novel geometry of VR in painting network that lends to remove dynamic objects from the 3D thing. The proposed network works in a cost of fine manner. The cost network learns to make the initial predictions of the image depth and semantic layouts on the region to be imprinted, while the refinement network learns to generate detailed textures from, from those uh, predictions. We refer to the initial predictions from the cross network as the intermediate multimodal representations. To enhance the perceptual consistency over time, we introduce an additional temporal feedback. Given two frames, the projected output at frame one is reprojected to frame two and passed back into the generator for impinging the second frame. Our temporal feedback is built into the model itself and is trained to end to end. Finally, we introduce a novel geometry aware temporal attention module that copies and borrows features from the visible regions in other frames to the target regions to be imprinted. Since our approach is efficient, we, ca we can exploit a, large, uh, a larger temporal window. This is achieved by computing the feature similarity between the pixels to be imprinted uh, and the and spatial temporal tube on the reprojected images centered uh, around the corresponding pixels. This is very efficient as it requires only a minimal number of candidate patches during training and can also dynamically scale uh, to make use of more or fewer views depending on the computation resources at inference time. In this video demonstration, we provide side-by-side -side, uh, visualizations of the input video, the output from the proposed master, as well as results from two state-of-the-art video impinging work. It's clear that the proposed method generates more photorealistic and geometrically consistent results as we leverage the 3D geometry explicitly through our model design.
In contrast to existing video impeding work, the proposed approach takes advantage of the geometric correspondence with longer term horizons. We now show the opposite problem, which is inserting objects, uh, uh, dynamic objects into an existing video sequence and generating a photorealistic video of the augmented thing. Let's begin with the, the question. So we chopped the object in the, in the two images uh, fake. Can you guess? Okay, here's the answer. Did you guess correctly? So what you saw uh, is GeoSim, a novel approach that leverages actor sim as well as the 3D geometry of the scene to simulate camera sensor data from multiple viewpoints, which are geometrically consistent. GeoSim takes advantage of the rendered camera data, LiDAR sweeps, and 3D bounding box annotations to aggregate real-world sensor data for dynamic objects encountered in the wild. Such data is readily available in modern self-driving car platforms. Uh, with our approach, we can create a large-scale and diverse 3D object bank with precise geometry, high-definition appearance, and accurate 3D poses. To build our assets, we de develop a 3D reconstruction network that takes camera and LiDAR sensory input from multiple viewpoints for a given dynamic object and outputs a high-precision 3D shape. Specifically, we process and combine cropped LiDAR point clouds and images into a single feature embedding, which we then use to predict deformations to a main template shape prior. We then perform energy minimization on the predicted shape to make sure it agrees with the input LiDAR and the image observations. Note that we don't require any conscious 3D shape data for our method. So here are some examples of 3D assets we created with their corresponding images. Note that we can uh, model vehicles of different sizes and shapes. Then we place the 3D assets we created onto the HD maps so that they reflect the traffic and the 3D layout in a realistic manner. Note that our object placement is not only 3D aware, but it is physically plausible and temporally consistent. We leverage and a intelligent driver model uh, or IDM uh, for simulating the vehicle's trajectory over time and making sure it has realistic acceleration and braking such that the full scenario is coherent. We use a novel view rendering with 3D occlusion reasoning to change the, uh, to, to create the appearance of the knob object in the new camera image. Here are some of the results for novel view ren uh, rendering. Finally, we generate photorealistic camera simulation using a post-completion image synthesis network. Unlike uh, existing work on neural image synthesis and manipulation, which either require human interaction, is non-realistic, or only models the 2D context, uh, our approach is fully automatic, photorealistic, and 3D layout aware. We compare the proposed uh, GeoSim with state-of-the-art 2D Neural rendering methods such as uh, such as the pixel based HD and the other guided impinging method, GeoSim uh, produced much more realistic augmented images with little or no distortions. As and compared to a simple copy and paste baseline, we can see the value of GeoSim 3D uh, aware placement and occlusion reasoning for a reasonable image scene, along with impinging to remove boundary uh, boundary artifacts. We also measure the perceptual realism uh, of the simulated images using the FID measure. Our method is capable of producing uh, significantly better quality images than the other methods. To further verify the realism of GeoSync, we conducted a human A-B test. We show a pair of images generated, by, uh, generated from different approaches on the same background image, uh, background real image, one from the GeoSim and the other one from the computing algorithm. We then ask the human judges to click the one they believe is more realistic. From over 20 users and close to 4.8K uh, image pairs, we can see that GeoCM images are preferred more than 94% of the time, and even sometimes 99% of the time across, across all baselines. This confirms that, that there's a significant 
gap between the baselines and geoseam that is immediately uh, noticeable. In addition, we conduct the downstream perception tasks, including image segmentation, 2D object detection, and molecular 3D object detection on the simulated images and compare the performance with real images. We now show how perception algorithm trained on real data uh, perform on images generated from the different simulation baselines. We first show the results on real images. Here are the results of the different image generation baselines on the different tasks. We want to emphasize here that uh, higher APO MLU perception metric on simulated data is not necessarily better. Instead, we want the perception metric to be closely, uh, to be as close as the, the numbers uh, on the real data. So difference reported in the parenthesis. The closer the metric on simulated images matches with the real, the more likely the perception algorithm considers the simulated images uh, as from the same distribution as the real data it was evaluated on. As we see in the table, there's a clear difference between using real images and synthetic images generated by the 2D-based uh, neural impinging methods. In contrast, uh, the proposed GeoSim not only produces uh, visually plausible images, but also perception algorithm trained on the real data alone will generate consistent results reflecting the uh, the, the, the correct semantics in both geo seam and real data. So here is an example of the thing with simulated object. Notice that we can simulate uh, object at different and diverse viewpoints. So, so here is the from the front view. Here's the example from the back view. We can also generate uh, uh, 3D, 3D objects uh, close by or very far away. This is a object like a vehicle very far away. Another example close by. Oh, we can act accurately handle the occlusion with static background objects. Uh, other vehicles. And even pedestrians. Even more excitingly, we can extend our geometry aware image simulation by composition approach to video simulation. Note that our simulated images are temporally coherent and that the added objects obey traffic and have reasonable motion. Multiple objects can be added to the scene and inter interact with each other. For example, performing the lane changes. Being 3D aware also means that we can do multi-camera simulation that is physically plausible. We hope the GeoSim is the next step in providing realistic camera simulation for autom autonomy testing. In summary, full autonomy testing and training means we need to have multiple components. To build such a complete simulation system, we need to animate the dynamic state of the environment. Uh, where we have actors including vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists. Then construct geometry for both the static environment and dynamic objects. And finally, similarly, the sensor observation, the SDV, uh, or self-driving car, receives. We are excited about simulation. There's a lot of exciting areas for the community to explore, such as simulating all kinds of sensors, world building, and automated training and testing. Thanks for listening.